Welcome back to Making Frugal Fun. I'm Shannon and I share our family's debt-free journey to pay off over half a million dollars of debt and the frugal living tips that we're doing along the way, including budgeting, organizing, meal planning, and all of that fun stuff. So make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. I've been trying to post videos every Thursday, but this one is like a bonus video this week because I wanted to make sure I got a March budgeting tips video in for you guys. It just did not happen over the last couple of weeks with all the snow days and the kids homesick and everything. I'm really glad to be able to get this video out to you guys this week so I can give you some budget buster reminders for March and also some fun free printables that are going to help you have fun and stick to your budget in March. I'm also going to do a debt free journey progress update for you guys too so let's jump in. I'm really excited about March because I'm hopeful for nicer weather, which means getting outside more. January and February, you're coming off of like the fun of Christmas and then it's just like blah, like everything's blah and you're like, okay, I'm done with the cold weather. I want to go outside. I want to do stuff. It's just very like unmotivating in the winter months. So I'm looking forward to that. As everyone starts to get outside more and spring break comes along and all of those things like people end up wanting to spend more money to travel and do all kinds of things. So it's good to be extra careful and extra intentional about your budget, especially if you're on a debt-free journey. Not to say you can't have any fun, which is why I eventually renamed my blog to Making Frugal Fun because I honestly think that you can have so much fun being intentional and being frugal. You just have to be a little creative and kind of shift your mindset a little bit. For March, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you've covered your set monthly expenses. These are things like your mortgage or rent payment, electricity, water, if you have like a security system, internet, TV, things that you pay for every month. You want to write all that stuff down first and make sure that when you look at your income for the month, like say this is your first budget you're ever doing, when you look at your income for the month and then you add up all your set monthly expenses and you're still not making ends meet, then that is a huge red flag that something is totally out of whack, like your housing payment is too high for your income, or maybe you need to just cut out TV or internet for a little while until you can work on getting a new job and increasing your income or finding a side hustle to cover your payments. So obviously it's gonna be really hard to even think about getting out of debt or making huge debt payments and seeing progress if you're like, I can't even pay my bills. So definitely that's the first thing you wanna do. How can we get these monthly bills covered? After that, you're gonna look at some other things that maybe you need to get done this month that are really important, not necessarily fun expenses, but that are important. Like maybe it's been a while since you've taken the kids to the dentist or something like that. So you're gonna to wanna to look at other miscellaneous expenses that you don't have to do this month if you have no extra money in the budget, but they're important and you want to get them done. After you've written out all of your vital expenses for the month, then you're going to go take a look at your planner, look at emails from the kids' schools, look at holidays, and see what other kind of spending is going to pop out of nowhere that is going to throw your budget off and you want to try to prepare for it as best you can. A few common March budget busters that just seem to almost come out of nowhere when you're not thinking about it is St. Patrick's Day. Now obviously this doesn't have to be an expensive holiday at all. If your kids don't have any green outfits and you want to spend like a couple dollars you know at the thrift store or at Walmart or Target or whatever to get them some green shirts for school of course you know it's fun we all want to participate in St. Patrick's Day and the holidays and everything so green outfits green food green cookies like all of those really fun things make sure that you set aside a small budget and I also have a free printable on my website and I'm gonna link this in the description below that has cheaper free St. Patrick's Day activities for families. You can print that off and put it on the fridge, just give you some ideas. Those will be great for spring break. And also a St. Patrick's Day scavenger hunt, and this is like good for the little ones if you wanna organize like a little scavenger hunt around your house. That's a really fun, free, frugal activity that your whole family can participate in. 
If you are a basketball fan, if you just like getting involved in like March Madness brackets and things like that, don't forget to budget for it if you're going to put down, you know, five or ten dollars. Not that I'm encouraging gambling or anything like that, but if you're going to put down a few bucks for to join like office March Madness pool or bracket, then don't forget to budget for that. Now, something like that, that would come out of our fun money budget, like our personal fun money budget. My husband and I each budget a hundred dollars a month so that we can just like spend it without having to like, you know, ask each other or clear it. Like if we were gonna do a March Madness bracket, we would take that out of our fun money. You know, it's fun, a lot of people like to do those, so. Another common March budget buster is spring break. And so obviously there's a lot of fun things that you can just do at home with your family, especially if the weather starts to warm up, parks, playgrounds, and all of those good things. Getting outside and shooting hoops or whatever. But something that you might forget about is childcare. So if you are both working parents and you don't have anyone to watch your kids during spring break, that's something you want to think about that could definitely bust your budget if you you normally have all your kids in public school and maybe there's some camps they can go to, maybe they can hang out with a friend that's like a stay-at-home mom. If you are going to go on a trip or travel anywhere, make sure that you are budgeting for not only like the gas and the hotel and everything, but food and the activities and everything that you plan to do once you get on your trip. As the weather warms up, a couple other things that might bust your budget are spring clothing. So especially if you have little kids and you can't just like pull out the spring clothes from last year and you have to get them like a whole new wardrobe, which is often the case for us, definitely don't be afraid to check thrift stores. I mean, I find like brand new stuff a lot of times at thrift stores or secondhand stores and also hand-me-downs like when people are like hey do you want these clothes I'm like yes please give them to me <laughs> because it definitely saves a ton of money and if you are in an area where it's gonna start warming up the grass is gonna start growing and the flowers are blooming and you need landscaping or someone to mow your lawn or something like that then make sure that you're including that in your spring March budget as well the big one, well, it's really next month, but I mean, if you think you're gonna owe taxes, you might wanna pause your debt snowball or miscellaneous spending and just like go hard on saving up for taxes that are gonna be due on April 18th, which is the tax day or whatever they call it, the tax deadline. <laughs> you also might need to pay fees to your accountant or like whatever tax software that you use. So make sure that you don't totally leave that until April because sometimes those tax bills can get up there and penalties and fees on unpaid taxes, yeah you can put it on like a payment plan or whatever but the penalties and fees accrue daily and it's crazy like we had unpaid tax debt that was like our first big debt and it was just, it was bad. So <laughs> definitely like you don't want to leave that to the last minute if you think you're going to owe taxes this year. And summer. Summer is coming really fast. It's weird because it's February, but I have a reminder to sign my kids up for swim lessons like next week because it's already opening up. And a lot of like the summer camps and stuff, they fill up so fast. Like I found that out last year. Even though it is the end of February and now March, you should be thinking about your summer plans if you wanna save the most money. I'm a huge advocate for planning ahead. As summer approaches, I'll of course be sharing bucket lists and tons of different ideas. So make sure you subscribe so I can help you with your budget every month. Okay, I think that's about it for March budgeting reminders. I also wanted to show you guys, I do have, if you're a cash envelope user, I do have for a dollar in my shop, I have some spring cash envelopes. They have spring themed categories and they also have like your regular categories like entertainment, restaurants, miscellaneous, gas, all those things. There's about 16 plus categories. Of course, I have also have free cash envelopes on my blog, but these are just like a fun extra and help support the channel and the blog. Also, don't forget about my spring St. Patrick's Day activities that I have. And I have my March budget busters and actually I have budget busters for every single month of the year so you can print this off and put it in your budget binder. This is free on my blog as well and I'm going to link to that in the description box below. One more freebie that I have for you guys. So I don't know if you've heard of the 100 envelope challenge. I have no idea who created this or how it started but I've seen it going around on TikTok. I've seen it go around on Pinterest. 
So I have a blog post about the 100 envelope challenge on my blog, which I will link to below. The 100 envelope challenge is just another way to save. I know a lot of people like saving money in different ways, different things motivate them, and sometimes a challenge is something that really helps motivate people, so I wanted to have this as an option on my blog, so I have information about it, but basically you need 100 envelopes, you put the numbers 1 through 100 on each envelope, and each day you just choose an envelope at random, and if it says like 6 on the envelope, you're going to put $6 in that envelope. And at the end of 100 days, if you do this every day for 100 days, you will have $5,050. So you could also spread it out over, you know, like I'm going to do this every other day or once a week. Of course, it would take like two years to do it that way. But um, this free printable that's on my blog in the blog post below, it has instructions on how to do the challenge. And it also has a tracker. And this would be fun just for like a savings tracker too and then it has like these like mini envelopes that you could print out and make a hundred of if you wanted but I would recommend you know go to Dollar Tree just grab like a box of envelopes and put numbers one through a hundred on those but anyways if that interests you if you're like a savings challenge kind of person and that really motivates you to save then make sure you check out the 100 envelope savings challenge in my blog post below and grab that freebie so we got lots of fun <laughs> March budgeting and saving freebies for you guys. I love printables, so make sure you check all of those out and get them for free on my blog. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything for March budgeting. Give me all of your questions about budgeting for March in the comments below. And I just wanted to do a quick debt-free journey update for you guys. So the closer we get to being done, I'm like, is this real? This can't be real. I don't know. But when we started our debt-free journey in January of 2019, we had basically $400,000 of student loans. I'm really focused on the student loans because we're almost done with those and I truly can't believe it. It's all like, it was all part of Navient, which is now Advantage. So it's just like one lump sum, but they're broken up into smaller loans, which helps you stay motivated on your debt-free journey because it feels like more attainable to try to knock off each one instead of just looking at that huge balance. Like the very first student loan was $1,000. And it's crazy to think that I kept that around for like 10 years before like just paying it off. But I'm just, you know, I was looking at the whole picture and thinking like once we were making good money, then we would tackle it. 15 loans, $381,000. We have one more. Number 13, direct loan, unsubsidized from Roslyn Franklin University of Medicine and Science, which is where I went to podiatry school. And it says that my estimated payoff date is June 18th, 2041, but we will have it done before this summer. We have $57,588 left. So although it is our final student loan, it is the largest because we started from the smallest loan. We were knocking off, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, like they were going up, up, up. And of course it got much harder and it was it was definitely harder to stay motivated when the loans started getting in like the 30s 40s 50,000s we have a tracker on our refrigerator um, that I got from debtfreecharts.com that is like Game of Thrones but it's Game of Loans like each shield is like $3,800 we just color in the shields every time we pay off $3,800 so that's how we broke up this $3,800 um, 3800 380 one thousand dollars so it's really crazy like I don't know how I'm gonna feel when we don't have student loans because I thought that was just gonna be something I always had of course that'll be our last personal debt we still have about a hundred thousand dollars of a, a small business association loan for our business so after we pay off the student loans we'll save our emergency fund and start saving for our house while concurrently, I don't know if I use that word right, but concurrently paying off our business debt using extra cash flow that we find in the business budget. I think it would probably end up where we finished our down payment and we finished paying off that office debt in like by next summer. So we'd be like buying a house and be debt free at the exact same time. Obviously what we can control is sticking to our budget, 
staying frugal, keeping our hope, keeping our energy, staying content where we are right now, prayer, you know, thanking God for everything he's given us, and obviously just working as hard as we can. So um, those are the things we can control, and we'll kind of see what we get blessed with here in the next year. And I'm really excited that you guys are following along on my journey. It keeps me so motivated and I love also hearing stories about people who have saved money on their grocery budget by using my meal planner or got inspired to start paying off their debt and living on a budget after watching my videos. Like that is so humbling. It's so crazy to hear stories like that. Thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, for supporting my channel, my blog, and our family. And I hope this gave you some motivation to get your March budget going. Make sure you grab my freebies and comment below if you have questions about how to get started budgeting or anything you want to know about our debt-free journey. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's not that I don't care.